Today, we have 300 cows. Currently, we are producing 38 liters per cow, and in the winter, we reach 42 liters. We provide feed three times a day. The floor cleaning system includes a 40,000 liter tank, and we have some passage valves to clean the floor. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now, and he will continue recording on farms around the world. My name is Erdmund Schroeder. We started this farm around 2009 or 2010. Before that, we had our farm in another location, and later we moved here to produce milk. Currently, we have a herd of 300 cows, with 229 in production at the moment. We operate under the compost barn system and are currently conducting our archaeation. Until now, the system was open air, but we have already begun transitioning to keep all cows under cover inside the compost barn. Our current daily production is 38 litres per cow, and in winter we reach 42 litres. The production average varies between 38 and 42 litres, depending on the time of year. With intense heat and the drying off period of some cows, our current average is 38 litres, totaling around 9,000 litres per day. The milk fat content ranges between 3.2% and 3.4%, while the protein content is at 3.3%. Feed is provided three times a day. We work with Holstein Genetics using artificial insemination and imported embryos from the Netherlands to improve our herd. The compost is turned over three times a day to ensure proper drying. This process is carried out daily. How long does the ventilation system operate and how much time does it stay on? It depends on the temperature. During hot periods, the fans run 24 hours a day, cycling on every three minutes. When temperatures drop at night, we usually turn them off. The base of the diet is corn silage, which is the main component, combined with high moisture grain and a balanced concentrate feed. Currently, we formulate the diet for a production of 38 to 40 liters per cow per day, which is the standard we follow and prefer to use. What strategies are used here to reduce heat stress in the cows? Ventilation is provided by fans, along with a sprinkler system for cooling. Additionally, we carefully manage animal comfort. In the compost barn, we allocate approximately 15 square meters of bedding per cow. Previously, we worked with 12 square meters per cow but for high production animals, above 40 liters per day, the ideal is 15 square meters. If the bedding becomes too damp, we apply agricultural lime to improve environmental conditions. How long have you had the barns? We started at the previous location. In 2018, we built part of the structure. In 2019, we expanded it. In 2020, we made another expansion. And in 2023, we completed the latest stage. We have been using this structure for one year now. We operate as a cooperative, and we have our annual Coprolanda event, which greatly supports dairy producers by facilitating experience sharing. This event plays a crucial role in keeping professionals in the dairy industry up to date. Currently, we have nine employees. Our work method is highly protocol-driven, following well-established guidelines. Each worker has a specific role, and we strictly adhere to schedules to ensure that each task is completed within the designated time, especially those that are part of the daily routine. We work in three shifts. The first shift starts at 5 a.m., the second shift at 1 p.m., and the last shift at 8 p.m. Regarding reproduction, we select the best cows and perform two inseminations with sexed semen. If a cow repeats estrus, we use conventional semen, for animals with reproductive difficulties, the last option is embryo transfer. Currently, our conception rate per service varies between 40% and 50%. Is milk payment based on milk solids like fat and protein or not? No, payment is based on fat content. The base is 3.2%. If we reach 3.4% or 3.6%, the payment increases slightly. If the milk has less than 3.2% fat, we receive a lower amount. Do the fans run 24 hours a day? Are they never turned off? During hot periods, yes. When temperatures drop, we turn some of them off. In this barn, we don't have automation for this control, but in the other one, we do. There, the fans adjust their speed according to temperature variations. What is the cost of electricity here? Is it expensive? 
I would say no, it's a reasonable price. Here in our region, in Paraguay, we have a very affordable energy cost compared to Brazil. What is the available area for corn cultivation? Here on this property, we have 47 hectares. In addition, we buy silage from neighboring producers and farmers who grow soybeans. Most of the silage comes from second crop corn. 15 days ago, we harvested a crop and now we are replanting. Our expectation is to produce silage by the end of May. And after that, what will be done? We plant oats for cover and have the option to grow soybeans or high moisture corn. After a few harvests of main season corn, we have a period available to plant oats as cover. For floor cleaning, we use a 40,000 litre tank with a passage valve that allows us to wash the floors twice a day. The used water passes through a settling system where the liquid is reused. The solid fraction is discarded in grazing areas. Around here, we have a pasture area for fibre production, which is the only forage resource available on the property. At the same time, we reuse the separated water from the solids in the settling system. This settling system works as follows. The water used for floor cleaning enters the first section of the system. Then it flows through a set of pipes and filters where most of the solids are retained. These solids are then reused for pasture irrigation. Additionally, we use part of this solid material in the compost barn bedding, helping to maintain the system. The first thing we need to understand is that a cow's digestion is different from ours. For example, a cow produces milk fat from fiber and generates protein from microbial protein. Therefore, to increase protein content in milk, we need to include sugar in the diet. However, to raise fat content, simply adding fat to the feed is not ideal as this can actually reduce milk fat. The correct approach is to provide more fiber. Until recently, our only fiber source was corn silage. For cows producing up to 25 liters, this was sufficient. However, we now have a herd averaging 39.5 liters per cow. We are in the peak of summer with temperatures reaching 40 degrees Celsius. And in winter, production can reach 45 to even 50 liters. Under these conditions, maintaining a good milk fat level becomes a major challenge. That's why we adopted a system called pre-dried forage, also known as haylage in other regions. This process involves harvesting the pasture, letting it wilt slightly, and then ensiling it. We store this material and use it as an additional fiber source whenever we notice a drop in milk fat content. This is because this feed contains no grains allowing for better diet adjustments. The nutrient recycling process is continuous. The pasture is cut four times a year. Cow manure is reused and applied to the pastures. This improves pasture growth, which is then consumed again by the cows. In other words, we maintain a constant nutrient recycling cycle, optimizing the production system. Yes, we have a vertical mixer and we load it using another tractor with a bucket to add the ingredients. And how does the equipment maintenance work here? Because if there's a problem with this one, you don't have another to replace it. No, we do the repairs ourselves right here. We don't have another option. But there are many people around here who do maintenance, right? Yes, we have technicians who carry out maintenance almost immediately. Additionally, in some cases, we can hire third-party machines to assist while the equipment is being repaired. Here, we have the Tifton pasture, where a subsurface irrigation system will be installed. Every 50 meters, there will be a water outlet allowing for direct irrigation of the area. At the moment, irrigation is done manually using hoses. In this area, we keep the growing primiparus, including pre-breeding primiparus. This group is part of our ongoing genetic improvement program, utilizing embryos and sexed semen from high quality bulls. Currently, we work with the best bulls, importing semen from the United States. The primiparis here are daughters of these elite sires. Additionally, we provide a specific concentrate for this group of primiparis, ensuring proper nutritional support for their growth and reproductive development. Once the primiparis are confirmed pregnant, they are transferred to the compost barn 